Welcome to ComSpark. Today we are in Cincinnati, Ohio. My name is Olivia Curie Fuqua and I will be your guest host. I'd like to welcome our guest, Rich Wills, the CIO of KMK Law. Thanks for being here this afternoon, Rich. Sure, glad we, to be. Absolutely, we appreciate your participation. So why don't you tell me a little bit about your background? I understand that you were in the hotel industry prior to coming to KMK Law. Can you tell me a little bit about how sure. You know, things have changed uh, within your role, moving into a different industry. I mean, those are both industries where you have a lot of customer data that's very sensitive. Sure. Uh, Security is probably a pretty top priority then as it is now. Mm -hmm. So uh, my path into IT is a little bit different. I, uh, uh, I went to Michigan State University and graduated in their business school in their hotel and restaurant management program and worked um, for about 13 years in the hotel business. Um, most of it in, in the operations and food and beverage operations end. Um, and then decided to get out of the hotel industry and started working um, with a, a local um, a friend who was a, a, a consultant, independent consultant, and um, uh, just to get into the industry. And um, one of his clients was the law firm that I now work for, KMK. Oh. And um, so 21 years ago, I uh, was hired as uh, just a PC support person uh, after pulling wire and that kind of stuff with my friend for a few months. And um, so now, 21 years later, I've been the CIO of our firm for about 10 years. So uh, from, an, from an information security standpoint, certainly when I was in the hotel business, we were just beginning to use computers and have uh, networks within the hotel business. and. Um, um, as with most businesses, uh, cybersecurity was not a thing then, mm -hmm. um, but certainly now as we've seen from um, the very well-known breaches in the um, Westin Hotels and their acquisition of uh, another hotel company um, and customer data, um, that certainly is a, a concern for them. Um, as it is for, for uh, those of us uh, in the legal business, um, you know, we're kind of a unique business in that uh, we don't have a whole ton of formal regulation, um, but uh, we service clients and hold information of our clients that most certainly do. Um, the legal industry as, as an industry was probably behind the curve in, in information security compared to uh, regulated industries like banking and, uh, you know, medical and those kinds of industries. So. Um, we were probably a little slow on the take in terms of of uh, making cybersecurity a top priority for us, um, but that quickly came to uh, fruition by virtue of our clients requiring that of us, and by virtue of some of the breaches that we've seen, um, you know, the Panama Papers and all those kinds of things, um, it really uh, caused us to get a clue and start to work toward um, really bringing cybersecurity to the top in terms of our priorities. And it's surprising that you said that uh, that the legal uh, industry isn't as regulated. You would think with the amount of client data that you all have that it would be a, a more scrutinized industry. Um, so I guess that kind of leads me into my next question. You know, a lot of people and IT leaders are looking at the cloud and how can they take advantage of the cloud, maximize the cloud, um, but there are some regulatory requirements that are preventing some of those industries from moving into the cloud. In an industry that's not as heavily regulated, do you all find those same challenges or how are you navigating you know, your move or your, your interest in the cloud maybe from some of the people at the, at the top level at, at your firm? Well, so for us, there um, hasn't been a lot of appetite to put our clients' information and our firm information in the public cloud. And um, you know, with the kind of requirements that we get in and surveys that we get from some of our clients, there are there are some, and we in the legal industry we talk amongst ourselves pretty pretty uh, frequently. Um, some of my counterparts have received requirements that they not store any of their information in a public cloud. Um, those sometimes come from long-term clients and large clients that. Uh, after the firm has already moved, for instance, their document management system into a cloud-based uh, uh, system. So for us, um, we made the decision to move our production infrastructure into the cloud and our DR infrastructure into the cloud, but in a private cloud type scenario. So really it's more of an infrastructure as a service. Um, 
uh, our data isn't commingled with with other uh, customers' data for those vendors, and um, it really is uh, basically taking uh, an infrastructure that is dedicated to us only and, and moving our environment to those areas. So we started in that arena with a DR as a service. Um, we initially and for many years hosted our own uh, or, or maintained our own DR environment with our own equipment in a data center in our own rack, et cetera, et cetera. That becomes difficult to keep up with, uh, to keep that, that uh, equipment refreshed. It's in a, a remote location, difficult to get to, all the things that come along with that. So uh, last year we moved our, uh, our DR into uh, DR as a service uh, with a vendor and, um, and who has become a trusted partner of ours and um, as sort of dipping our toe in the water to, to uh, taking the rest of our production environment into that arena, which we're doing this year, so. Awesome, sounds like you guys have a lot of things going on. Are there any other projects that you wanna to highlight today or anything else that you're doing um, as far as initiatives to, to grow the business or add more value uh, from the IT side? Well, as a 65 year old law firm, uh, there's a lot of we've always done it this way kind of thing. Um, and in my 21 years there, certainly the landscape has changed dramatically. The technology that's available has changed dramatically. Um, and, um, you know, a 65-year-old law firm still likes to do things the way that they've always done it. So um, for me, at this point in my career and at this point with our firm, you know, for, for the last several years, I have looked for ways to bring efficiency by virtue of technology to the firm. So things such as um, um, the whole new matter intake process, or onboarding of new clients and new cases for, uh, for those clients um, has been done in a very antiquated way. And um, so we're uh, embarking on a project to you know, put some work, electronic workflow behind it to take several important processes that are, um, that come with every new client that comes on board, vetting conflicts of interest, uh, making sure that you know uh, a new client or a new matter isn't uh, adverse to another client or matter that we're working on, those kinds of things, but to automate that and to, uh, to make that process much more streamlined and, um, and much more efficient. Um, there are other tools that we're talking about bringing to bear, some artificial intelligence things, um, that were very much a part of our e-discovery uh, practice uh, over the past number of years that are now being applied to things such as uh, contract review and creation and, and some of those kinds of things. That's down the road a little bit. Probably um, one of the most difficult things for us is to um, get good adoption of new technology amongst our our internal clients, our, our internal customers, which are our lawyers and paralegals and secretaries. Um, you know, there are many, many people uh, at my firm that have been there for many, many years, longer than myself. And um, change is not easy, mm -hmm. um, but, um, but that is something that, um, that, that we try to work through and try to get greater adoption by virtue of getting buy-in on, uh, on the front end of a project, talking about problems and stating, um, you know, what if questions, what if you could do it this way, or what mm -hmm. if you do that more efficiently, or what would you think about this or that, and involving um, many of our internal clients in the selection process and decision-making process of some of the, the technology that we're uh, bringing to bear to, to help make the the business more efficient. And it helps with the adoption, right, if sure. you're involved Absolutely. in that process. Yeah. Awesome. Certainly the case. Well, we appreciate you being here this afternoon, and, uh, and like I said, thank you for uh, for participating in the uh, in the discussion. Sure, great. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks very much. Nice, nice talking with you. Absolutely. I would like to thank Rich for joining us today, and for those listening to the interview. To learn more, go to comspark.tech.